Yo, check, 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 one, two, one, two. Des at King of the Pit TV signing in live and large. Yo, people, I've uploaded a whole bunch of videos uh, only yesterday, uh, so I'm glad to get them up and going and on the move. Um, we're going to listen to some Merciful Fate today, okay? Um, this record is entitled Melissa. Who is Melissa? Maybe we will find out during the recording. Um, this one's for the Metalheads. I listened to Evil, like more or less at the start of this channel. I think the quality was probably pretty bad because uh, I wasn't running it like the way I should have. Um, so you were only getting it picked up via um, my laptop speakers. But yeah, because of that, that means I am going to bypass the very first song on this record. But we're just going to jump straight in from track two and onwards. I'm looking forward to some quality riffs. I'm looking forward to some heavy metal full stop, all right? So uh, without further ado, let's get on with it. And my question before delving in is, Merciful Fate, are they underrated or overrated? Because as a metalhead, well, when I say as a metalhead, uh, I came into alternate to extreme music via metal. Um, thrash metal was my gateway in particular. And I don't remember people really referencing Merciful Fate all that much. You know, but I know that they did influence the greats and um, I saw King Diamond live and I was very impressed. Uh, I've never heard any of the music before. So without further ado, if you want to support your boy and get access to these full uh, album listens, first thing without having to wait on and on and on and on. Check the link down there. Support your boy. This one is entitled Curse of the Pharaohs. Let's go. <laughs> Come on. Some video game riffage. <laughs> Alright, I'm not saying it's bad, but that was a little bit disjointed. Yo, you know what? I wanted them to continue on with that riff because that was a great riff. We're taking it all the way back to the start. That was a quality riff. You can't go wrong with that. Proper digging into the strings, or at least you could do with this. Yo, this is a guitarist's riff right here. Yo, uh, this is such a badass riff. I like them open chord bits. Come on. Let's have a look when this record was put out, shall we? 1983. Metal Blade Records. 83 might possibly be the best year for metal and punk music, in my opinion. I think alternate music as a whole might have peaked in 83. 82 to 83. What's, what, what do you think? As far as a particular year, cause nineties no. Late eighties, debatable. Two thousands, uh, I don't think I don't think we've experienced the two thousands uh, standing the test of time so much at this point to really cast judgment on that. So yeah, I think eighty three in particular. So many good records. Oh, that high register vocal is just the classic cliche 
stereotype of like heavy metal vocal in it. The the ball grabbing. Ah! Come on. Uh, drummer's kind of grooving like a New York hardcore band at this point, like a late 80s New York hardcore tough guy band. You hear how the first bit of that guitar solo was panned? We had two guitar solos going off. Was it harmonising or was it the same solo played separately? I think we're going to introduce that second guitar back around again because it's come out right now. Oh no. Anybody know about the band Metal Church? I've never listened to them before. Cool, cool, badass tune. We did revise that first riff though. Proper video game racer riff that, I love that riff. I want to go back on that. I'm hoping that we've got some riffs like that coming up. we got Into the Coven coming up next. Track number three of seven. Des, King of the Pit TV signing in live and large. Uh, these tracks are relatively long, but I think I'll blast through them easy enough. We're listening to Merciful Fate tonight. And uh, I'm just looking out for the riffs. I want to hear some riffs, all right? So let's get straight into it. So this band came before Metallica, right? Is this their first LP in 83? Some lovely classical finger style there. I don't think it's on a nylon though. Sounds like a, uh, what would you call it? A steel guitar? <clears throat> steel strung guitar. What do you think? Uh, do you like the electric lead guitar or should that be clean as well? Because I think it would have sounded nice with a clean guitar doing the solo. I like it regardless. Lovely.
Dude, I'm into mosh music, right? Like hardcore, hardcore mosh music, yeah? Uh, where metal meets hardcore punk and people just kick each other's heads in and like walk on people's heads off stage and stuff. This, this sort of riffing will go down a treat. Dude, this is so good. This is hard. It's really hard riffing. <laughs> Great riff, nothing over the top. Nice, nice tempo. Just digging in. Same tempo as um, oh, what's the riff I'm thinking of? Yeah. Chromax did a lot of riffs like this. To be fair, when they went metal. It's a back up. Oh, do you know how many uptight metal bands and metalheads would be like scared of doing a section like this in a song? What 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 are you on about? We're not we're not just gonna we're not just gonna riff for twenty four hours straight. This is what makes good bands great. It, this 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 surprised me. This section. What have we got? So we've got like a ton of reverb on the vocals to the degree where I thought it might have actually been an introduction to a keyboard, right? Wow. This is some good effing metal, man. So many transitions here. Like, I'm not a fan of really long drawn out solos, but the consistency of the rhythmic uh, element of the band, just switching it up and keeping it fresh, I can really enjoy what I enjoy, which is like the riffing and the rhythmic aspect of things. I don't have to just be absorbed within this like shred solo 24 hours a day. I can listen to the rhythm and just be like, yes, yes. And then it'll kick up into something new. And I like that. Keeping it fresh on the rhythm side during the solo sections is something bands don't really pay too much attention to or need to pay more attention to in my, my opinion. You hear that? Oh, hold on. Can you? Does that actually come through? Oh no, I can hear it through my speakers because I'm plugged into an interface. I don't think you can hear it up. 
Can you hear that? Yeah. If you can hear that coming through, that's sick. I'm going to start incorporating that a lot more, to be honest with you. I'm just going to start jamming along, people. I'm just going to start jamming along. Right, let's keep it moving. I got to listen back to that. Yo, if, if it just comes like the acoustic twang and not like what I heard then, then I'm going to be gutted. Shout out to all the Merciful Fate fans, one love. That was sick, that was sick. That was a great tune, that was a great tune. Let's keep it moving at the sound of the demon bell. This one sounds hard. <laughs> We're already kicking off with a riff. Let's keep it moving, people. Des, King of the Pit TV. I don't want to waste no time. I know I got riffs coming up. Track four or seven. This one is at the sound of the demon bell. We're listening to Melissa start to finish. Wowzers, come on. <laughs> Yo, how much were these early heavy metal bands influenced by like ACDC? Cause ACDC could riff like this. Oh, they got a good knack of just throwing a ton of reverb on the vocal line and just having it drift. I really like that sound that they've got here. There's a great production on this record. It's just right, isn't it? Hear that little on the muted strings there. Have we got a guitar solo coming up? I could taste it in the air, people. Oh, that's why they call me the king of the pit, yeah?
Yeah, I bet if you've seen the band live at this point, this is where the uh, double kick will just be blowing wind at your face through the monitors. You know that sound. You know when you do sound when when bands are doing sound check and you're coming down the stairs into a venue to to get there early for the show, and you just feel the double bass during the sound check. Do 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 do. You could feel it getting brushed across your face. I, I know that this is happening right now. Roma right now. There's some crazy blues riffing going on in this tune in particular. Sounded a little bit proggy, that riff, you know. We've got Black Funeral coming up next here with a track entitled Black Funeral. I hope there's a riff or two in this one. Let's keep it moving. There's King of the Pit TV. This one's entitled Black Funeral. You know what we do. We listen to these records start to finish. We just do our thing, people. This one's entitled Black Funeral. I'm hoping there's a riff in this one with a name as hard as that. Let's go. So we got this guy saying Hail Satan and the next track's entitled Satan's Fall. I'm hoping we'll get a really good riff coming up here near at the end. I assume we're going to get another guitar solo, but I want a really nice riff.
I feel a little uninspired by this riffing in this tune, to be fair. I like the vocal line. Though. I'll tell you what, I've got, I've, when, when, when songs are like relatively long, I always get kind of excited at the short song because I feel like they jam pack it with good stuff. <laughs> They should have riffed on that. Dun, dun. I wanted to hear some of that. Yes now, right, Satan's Fall coming up next, 11 minutes 26. Whoa, we're going to probably be getting into some storytelling in this one. Let's keep it. Yes now, bless now. This is track six of seven. We're listening to Melissa from start to finish. This one's entitled Satan's Fall. This one is 11 minutes and 25 seconds. This is going to be an epic, right? Hold on, let's go. Straight into it. Them dual guitars going off there. Virgin on a black metal escrow. You heard the reverb on them toms there, they sounded massive. There's a lot of in and out on this song so far. So where we've just cut to different sections and it's just purely been the one guitar playing off the riff uh, in like a single picked manner, not necessarily the uh, heavy metal riffing we've heard throughout the record so far. Sort of like at the sound of the Demon Bell, which was track four, where they sort of fell back on a little more of a bluesy riffing uh, experience throughout the whole tune. Feels like they've attacked particular tunes with like quite conceptual instrumentals.
Come on. the front man who's doing the low vocal as well, right? Just to make sure. Because you rarely hear him go into that lower register, even though it isn't really that low. Come on. Them drums came in on a weird sort of uh, time in there, I thought. That snare hit. But it does accent the uh, power chords, I suppose. Love that. Do do do. That's powerful. Kick up the ass. Come on. Them harmonies are sick. Oh, these dudes are coming in like Rage Against the Machine right about now. This goes through so many sections, there's so many movements to this tune.
this is quite a cool jam to be honest with you. This section here, this bridge and instrumental. Get a nice little bop on side to side. Dang, 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 dang. Good rhythm to it. I already know this is going to be potentially the tastiest solo on the record. It's, it's got the right energy for it, it's got the right environment. Come on, I hope, I hope, I hope that this guitar sings. <laughs> Anybody listened to Sheer Terror before or Celtic Frost? Sounds like one of them riffs. Anybody want me to check out Celtic Frost? I only know one Celtic Frost tune and I know of the band because of a hardcore act called Sheer Terror. Like did a little bit of a, that's where they sort of got their sound from, so that's as much as I know, but I know Celtic Frost are a well-loved band. <laughs> This really is an epic, people. This really is an epic. Um, oh, if you want my opinion right now, this is a bit too long for me. This this is the reason why I haven't gotten to Iron Maiden at this point. Because some of it's a bit stretched out. This is, I don't have the attention span, people. But I've really appreciated the craft and the amount of time that's gone into just putting all of this together, then going to the studio as a full band and ensuring that it's all tight on record. That's that's a lot of hard work.
There we go. Um, <laughs> that was a big tune. Um, as far as commenting on any particular aspect of it, I'm afraid I can't do, all right? There was no revisit to any of these sections. We just went from bit to bit to bit to bit to bit. So in this 11 minutes and 25 seconds, there was just an abundance of material in there. It was tight, it was consistent, it was good. I mean, what more can I say? Uh, was it the best 11 minute 25 track I've ever heard in my life? Not necessarily, no. <laughs> um, but it was good. I prefer some of the other tracks on here, to be honest with you. I, the best thing I like about Merciful Fate, right, is that that, that classic Roots duh, 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 heavy metal riffing. I just want to hear that over and over again. Let's finish this record. We've got Melissa coming up next, people. There's King of the Pit TV signing in. This one is entitled Melissa. We're on the final track of the, well, the album entitled Melissa by Merciful Fate. This is 7 of 7. Let's go. Who the hell is Melissa? Once again, I want to give a shout out to all the Merciful Fate fans. You've got good taste. I like that this band can die it down a bit, you know. Have you noticed that of all the best bands, Slip, well, all of the uh, leading metal bands, right? Slipknot can go clean. Metallica had an abundance of clean sections. Merciful Fate are going clean. You don't have to be 24-7 metal up your ass. You can, you can bring it back to give a little bit of a dynamic and contrast. Oh, uh, it's a very niche reference. That sounded like a tune off of Tony Hawk's, uh, a rap song. I, I don't know what one it was. I might remember. Melissa was a witch.
Sorry, I don't really have too much to say at this moment in time. Sorry, people. I can only comment on guitar solos to such a degree, especially when it comes from the same band. The tone on that guitar and the way it's produced sounds like something that was produced in the 70s. It's kind of got a, you know, like a, 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 a regressive sort of aesthetic to that sound, you know? On that one particular broken chord guitar at least. Okay, so we finished off with a track that wasn't necessarily marketed to the metal metal heads, uh, but I still think it was a fitting song as far as the sound goes to finish off on. Still plenty of content, plenty of substance. It wasn't so far off of the general sound of the record in regards to it, it was still pretty metal. You still had a few like overdriven distortion bits, and um, I'm sure it told a good story that I wasn't necessarily paying attention to. So that was Melissa. Right, I'm signing out, people. Um, if you want to hear my overview of this record, including a rating out of 10, and you want to keep in touch with these full uh, album releases prior to me actually uploading them onto YouTube, check me out down in the uh, description of this video. And without further ado, I'm signing out. So until next time, 